mad, crazy, insane. While it is common for zombies maps to be titled in another language, there are none that seem to so adequately and perfectly describe itself as the second edition to the zombie series. Many zombies locations only manage to put a literal name to the map, such as Night of the Undead, Swamp of Death, or Theater of the Dead, but never has a map had such an appropriate name as the one we will be looking at today. It's more than just a name, but in fact a description that wholly encompasses the very nature of the map itself. Mad. Crazy. Insane. These are rough translations for the term the Germans refer to as Verrucht. Hit it! Freaking zombies. It's over. No, it ain't over. This is just the beginning. Hey, what's up? Welcome to the second episode of Zombies Retrospective. Today we're going to be looking at Verrucht. If you missed the last episode, you can feel free to start here, but if you want the full experience, you may want to go and watch last week's episode on Nocturne and Toten. And there'll be a link to that down in the description. Today though, we will again be looking at Verrucht, what is often considered to be one of the scariest zombies maps of all. Time. Verrucht, however, also boasts the achievements of being the first ever map to have power, traps, a moving box, voice acting, and most importantly, perks. And while Verrucht did manage to achieve a lot, it still is often heavily criticized. While Verrucht is a horrifying, unique zombies experience, in a lot of ways it is perhaps deservedly overlooked in the world at war lineup. And in this episode, we will be examining the atmosphere, innovation, and gameplay of Verrucht to figure out what makes it so disregarded despite doing so much right. So anyways, let's get into it. Verrucht is without a doubt one of the most unsettling zombies maps of all time, so I think it would be most appropriate to start the video by looking at the atmosphere. If Noxter and Toten is the map located on the doorstep of Hell, Verrucht would be found in its seventh circle. And while these maps serve as neighbors, Verrucht finds its element of horror in a very different place. Verrucht is gruesome, sinister, and sets a very different tone compared to Noct, despite being similar. While Noct uses isolation to scare the player, Verrucht relies more heavily on imagery and audio to take the player to a dark Place. Where do we even start? Whether you spawn on the German or American side of the map, the brutality of what occurred here is instantly portrayed. On one side we see what looks like an operating chair, covered in blood, with a piece of limb still stuck in one of the arm restraints. If we spawn on the other side we see a morgue. Walking nearby will reveal eerie noises from the past, a baby crying, a woman begging for help, and a man screaming for his life. When we are reminded of the era and location of this asylum, it only takes a small knowledge of history to understand what went on here. Perhaps maybe once a safe haven for the mentally ill, the Wittenau Sanatorium has also seen some of humanity's most malicious acts. Yet it only gets worse as things go on. The back of the building sits next to what may be perhaps the most somber image to date in zombies. We see a lifeless forest still simmering from the fire that ravaged it. Smoke fills the air to silhouette the figures moving from it. Even today, there is a presence here which feels larger and more evil than just the zombies themselves. The courtyard holds the focus of the map as a central spawn point for the undead, and moving upwards, things continue downward. We learn the true definition of insane by seeing dates, names, and symbols covering the walls in blood. A butcher's cleaver rests on top of a crimson-soaked table, ever so menacing. The entire setting is stained in the atrocities of the war. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, it's only once we get to the power room that there is any shift in tone whatsoever. It may just be the stark contrast that it acts against the rest of the map, but there is something peculiar about this area. While not scary, the power room of Rook shows a small glimpse into what is to come within the zombies universe. It's scientific and completely out of place for the location, but as modern zombies players, we know it's only a drop in the bucket of fancy tech. Heck. But while horrifying in one sense, Varuk does not strike a perfect tone. This is the first map to feature voice acting, and it does not land as well as it would go on to do in future maps. The Marines speak in overconfident one-liners, which to me feels reminiscent of what Black Ops 1 would be known for. While that style of voice acting would go on to define parts of the series, the lines we hear on Verrucht undermine the themes of the map. By showing that the Marines are unafraid, it thereby tells the player to not be afraid either. The setting lands in a grey middle area that contradicts itself and takes away from what otherwise would have been an almost perfect atmosphere. To this day, I am still left wondering if no voice acting at all would have been better. Okay, let's see about getting the power back on. But from here, let's look now to innovation, which is one area where Verrucht Excel. I think it should go without saying that Baruch very successfully introduced some of the most iconic aspects of zombies to date. We see the introduction of power. This gives the player a temporary goal to make early rounds more interesting and then rewards them with amazing new stuff. The first of those things being reconnection with teammates. Verrucht has two spawns, and the only way to be reunited is through turning on the power. This is a fun quirk that gives the map something truly unique to stand on, and furthermore, electric traps provide the player with a much needed extra line of defense. Yet most importantly, we see the introduction of perks. Juggernog, Speed Cola, Quick Revive, and Double Tap all probably land in the top six most iconic pieces of imagery from all of zombies, and this is where these four are introduced. These perks give the player a much needed buff against the horde, and it turns progression into something more than just rolling the box. The player is given an additional fighting chance. It's something else to strategize and think about and use to their advantage. Plus, I mean, come on. Just look at these amazing designs. I think in modern times, we sometimes overlook just how unique these things really are. Complete with jingle and all, perks were something revolutionary for the time. And even at the time of their addition, these perks felt completely natural and were implemented impeccably. Atmosphere, along with all of these new features of the map, take us to the actual gameplay itself, which, to be blunt, certainly isn't perfect. One of the most glaring issues with Verrucht is solo play. While Noct poses an interesting challenge, Verrucht hands the solo player a near impossible one. Verrucht is meant to be a camping map, but from the two-sided spawns to two-player mandatory camping spots, it's also clear that this is a map that was designed for team play in mind. As a solo player, there are few effective locations to camp by yourself because most spots have more than one area to cover. This makes camping only possible to round 15 or less, and after this time, the solo player is left to rely on kiting, which, need I remind you, didn't even exist at the inception of this map. Even today, to effectively run the solo strategy on Verrucht, you have to be in the 99th percentile of skilled players. Verrucht is tight, fast, and still has some bugs which can make for an experience that is not just challenging, but frustrating. It doesn't feel like the developers made this map with solo play in mind, and because of this, Verrucht lost a large portion of the community. That said, the cause of the difficulty is also the most redeeming feature of the map. I mentioned earlier that Verrucht is the scariest zombies map ever, and I really don't think that that is an uncommon or overzealous statement. But is that simply because of blood on the walls and terrifying screams? I think only partially. See, imagery and audio can only go so far. Eventually, a player will get numb or desensitized to these things, and the effect will wear off. If all Verrucht had going for it were imagery and audio, it probably would have fallen flat on its 
face. The thing that makes Verruckt special is in fact the gameplay. Like Noct, it manages to strike fear into many of its players. And if I had to describe Verruckt without knowing a lick of German, I might very well describe it as being insane. Verruckt is high strung to the 10th degree. It's a map that takes everything you thought you knew about modern zombies and throws it out the window. The rooms are tight, the hallways are tighter, and the staircases are death sentences. While perks at first may seem like a huge edge against the zombies, by round 10 they're no more than enough to get by. The zombies themselves are even significantly more aggressive. They can now attack through barriers, have the ability to double hits, and will swipe at the player when moving. Yet the final piece of the insanity puzzle is the zombies' speed. Verruckt Sprinter Zombies are the definition of insanity. Faster than any other regular zombie, these sprinters will outrun a player in all cases unless they are also sprinting with only the lightest of weapons. Oh yeah, and these sprinters start at round 6, only increasing in frequency from there. By playing with speed, Verruck takes the idea of claustrophobia that we examined on Noct, sprinkles it in meth, and lights it on fire. It's an anomaly that just doesn't even feel right. It's like the game developers accidentally left the game speed on 125% and never bothered to patch it back. By round 15, you are gasping for breath as even a nuke only grants you seconds of relief. Everything is tight, compact, and pushed together like knocked, but it's ramped up. Your weapons shoot faster and you reload faster, but the zombies move faster. Sometimes so fast, they feel like a jump scare. There will be no zombies in your line of sight, and then in the blink of an eye, you've been cornered and are down. It's not just fast, it's a wired, full-throttled zombies experience, and probably the closest thing to insanity that we have ever seen. So, with all that said, why is Verruckt not considered to be one of the greats? It was exceptionally innovative and doubled down on the beloved themes of Nocturne Toten. It took the style of claustrophobia and pressure to the next degree and coded it in a theme of blood and horror. On paper, this sounds like it should have been a perfect experience, yet it didn't do it for all players. While it did a lot of things right, it sometimes undermines itself. This is first seen as mentioned with the soldiers showing little fear eroding the tone the map sets out to achieve. Furthermore, by increasing the pacing of the map, some argue that Varuk feels more high strung than downright scary. The zombies come at the player so fast that the suspense is lost in needing to react, and instead it only incites tension. While not necessarily a bad thing, it's not what the map seems to have been aiming for. More than anything though, Verruckt is a map that has struggled to find its sense of identity within the zombies genre. Verruckt feels stuck in an awkward adolescent phase of World at War. It's too advanced to be praised for the simplicity and original innovation of Noct, even though it's part of the journey to how we get to Doris and by proxy, modern zombies, Noct will always be the limelight for being the original. See, you never hear people cut Verruck slack for being basic like they do with Noct. It's the second child, less appreciated despite its efforts to try harder. And yet, sadly, however, it's also not advanced enough to compete with a titan like Doris. Without the advancements of wonder weapons, pack-a-punch, and interesting characters, Verruckt forever sits in the massive shadow cast by the giants of World at War. Without the advancements of new wonder weapons, pack-a-punch, and interesting characters, Verruckt forever sits in the massive shadow cast by the giants of World at War. In the most simple of reason, it's not the micro details that make Verruckt unappreciated, but rather the macro ones. People forget Verruckt because on a grand scale, it fails to hold significance. Verruckt is a stepping stone that got us from knocked to modern zombies, but sadly ever thought of as little more.
And ladies and gentlemen, that is going to wrap up our second episode of Zombies Retrospective. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like, and if you are new to the channel, please subscribe as well. Maybe consider checking out the Knock Your Own Toten Retrospective if you haven't seen it. Next week, we will be looking at the Swamp of Death, or Shinonuma. So I hope you guys are excited for that, and I'll see you then. Peace out, you freaking nerds. Oh, did it? Unplug.